Welcome back to Beacon in the Storm. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. Today's episode, we're going to ask a simple question that may not be so simple, but do men need women? And so that's, um, man, I, I say that out loud. And um, my first thought is, boy, that's almost kind of sexist, isn't it, Brad? Do men need women? Of course they need women. How could, like, were you just going to cull all the women and, and you know, just live a man's society and all of that? I'm like, I actually think the technology is there, but um, I, I'm not saying that. That's in no way. What am I saying? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying emotionally, structurally in the in society, can a man just go through his whole life without needing a woman in it? And I mean, it's it's happened numerous times, but obviously there's this kind of societal stigma that, you know, if a man is a bachelor and like willingly a bachelor his entire life, what's going on there, right? Maybe uh, there's some things going on that he's not talking about or not willing to admit is kind of a line of thinking that will happen societally. But um, so I was I was just uh, in my last episode talking about male role models and, you know, we um, I, I brought up uh, the Barbie movie and how in it Ken realizes that he doesn't doesn't need to define his life as being Barbie's boyfriend. He can be his own man. He's Ken enough, right? Ken enough. Yeah, whatever. Um, and so here we are. And I'm, I'm just asking this question. Can a, does a man actually need a woman in his life? Can this guy just decide that he wants to, to go to school, get a job, live, and just travel the world, do his hobbies? You know, uh, can he be the 40-year-old virgin and just not need him? Um, now, like, I love that movie. I absolutely love the 40-year-old virgin. The, the message in it nowadays, um, like, you get censored if you say half that stuff nowadays. Uh, but in it, he talks about how he was... Um, he did try when he was young and it didn't go well. And he just kind of gave up and decided that he was going to live his life without having to worry about it anymore. And what happened was all of the people in his life found out about it and were like, bro, we got to change that because that's not right. Societally, it's not right that a man not try to get with women. And um, but, you know, in the feminist movement, it like a big old thing was that women don't need men. They can be happy without men. They should be able to have a life without defining themselves around a man. And here I, I want to have the conversation. Do men need to define themselves around women? And um, I think the Barbie movie was trying to say that at the end, that men don't. Um, so, hey, right on there. But um, I don't agree with the patriarchy stuff, but that's beside the point. All right, so there... There are men figuring this out right now, and it's it's kind of um, they're trying to make a movement about it. They have made a movement about it. It's uh, men going their own way, and uh, they have a terrible acronym M M G O T W or something like that. Um, like, okay, these guys have decided that they just don't need women in their lives anymore, and there is a bit of a sexist undertone to it in that you know. What if a woman like pops into your life? Are you just going to ignore her? Are you going to pretend she doesn't exist? Are you like, and so like I kind of understand why there's some arguments, but I don't think the majority of men in it feel that way. That like if a woman pops into my life, I'm going to treat her civilly. I'm going to treat her like a normal person, and you know I'm just not going to base my life around needing to have one of them in it. Okay, cool, right? Like I personally think there's nothing wrong with that that idea of men going their own way because you know. You don't, I don't think you need another person. You don't need to define yourself by any other person on this planet. You can be your own self, right? And so, um, but societally, society says that uh, men, if, I, I've asked plenty of people this question, right? I've asked a ton of people, what does it mean to be a man? And the main answer that comes back over and over and over and over again is a man needs to be a provider for his family, because if he's like, what's the point of being a provider if you don't have someone to provide for, right? So if you're if you don't have a family, well, you're just taking care of yourself, in which case you don't need to contribute that much to society. And 
and for some reason that's looked down upon, we want men to try to contribute to society in a meaningful fashion. And apparently the best way to do that is to make sure he's anchored down with a, a wife or a family and, um, you know, kids and kids and kids. That way he's, he's deeper in debt and definitely needs to contribute even more in order to pay for them all. And like, that seems odd, right? Like, Shouldn't, shouldn't we want that man to do what he wants to do, to be happy, to try to contribute to society as a whole, and not just because he has to, because of a family? Like, where's, where's the fairness in that? And um, I'm already hearing some of the more radical feminists say, well, that's what we're trying to get away from. That's, that's a toxic masculinity there. Wait, hold on. Caring for a family is toxic masculinity? No, the idea that um, a man is forced to care for a family is toxic masculinity. I don't think that man decided, like, sua sponte on his own uh, when he was a young boy that, you know, I'm going to have to, ha I have to have a family that I put myself in debt for and I have to get a job in order to support. I, I'm sure there's some guys out there who want a wife and want kids, but um, I think they have other ambitions. I, I think most people start off with some amb ambition growing up and then it's beaten out of them. Um, I remember, um, as an example of ambition being beaten, beaten out of you, uh, when I was a, an attorney, uh, my wife and I um, had a client come in. It was a guy and his son. He was a seven-year-old son. And um, I don't remember the exact issue, and I couldn't even tell you the exact issue the guy was there for. But during the meeting, the seven-year-old kid um, asks me, like, hey, if, if I study, do you think I can be an attorney too? Can I be a lawyer? My wife and I go, yeah, of course you can. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of study. But if that's what you want, yes, you can. And so the guy and his son leave and we hear him go, did you hear that, daddy? They said that I could be an attorney if I want to. And the dad goes, they're lying to you. You'll never be an attorney. And so, you know, that, that one haunts me to this day because... You know, that was a little kid who in that moment probably could have decided his entire life path. He could have gone on to be an attorney and done great things for this country, for the world, for all we know. But because someone that he loves and respects and cares about him told him that he could never do it and that we were lying to him, most likely he decided that we were lying to him. And so... I think of that and how many little boys are being raised and told that when you grow up, you have to have a family, right? That you have to have a family because that's how we define boys, that you're a provider. And that's essentially the only role that a man has. If you take away the provider role, what is it that makes a man special? If we should be special, right? Like we're different. Men and women are different. And so women have special role. They, they can have babies. They don't have to. Uh, yeah. Women can have babies. <laughs> uh, nearly got myself in trouble there with the PC police. Um, women can have babies. But men, what else is a man good for, right? They, uh, they're good at, at moving stuff and constructing stuff and putting their lives in danger in order to do stuff and have dirty jobs and all that because they don't have any other choice, right? They don't have any other role. They don't have any other thing. And you can say, oh, that's toxic masculinity. That's the patriarchy all you want. But like, what else are we supposed to do? What else can we do? Is a man just gonna be allowed to stay, stay at home and do nothing all day long? No. I mean, we, uh, we have this idea of uh, failure to launch where young people, predominantly men, young people are staying at home and living with their parents in their basements well into their 30s and 40s, just never moving out. And why? Why is that? Well, by and large, it's because they haven't gone off and started a family yet. Although there's plenty of examples of the family moving in with the parents rather than moving out. Um, but it's, it's by and large, men aren't getting married. And because they're not getting married, they're not starting families, there's no reason to move out. They have, you know, part-time jobs. They may even have decent paying jobs. Um, but I have to imagine at some point, if you have a decent paying job 
and you have more than enough to cover rent, more than enough to cover everything, all of your expenses, you're going to want the freedom of just being on your own. And so you have instead these guys who get just enough to pay bills and enjoy themselves, maybe pay their parents' rent, but they're still at home. And it's just no incentive. Why aren't the parents kicking them out? Like, I do not understand that. I do not understand why the parents aren't kicking them out. And it's, oh, well, they're, they're just not making enough to make it on their own. They're not doing this to make it on their own. Like, well, if you kick them out, they'll have to figure that out, right? Like, you know, there's plenty of examples of people getting multiple jobs in order to pay the bills and or just get a better paying job, you know, go to night school in order to be able to complete a degree and get a better job. But why? Why would they need to do that? What is the incentive to do it? If your parents aren't going to kick you out, you don't have anybody else to provide for. Why not stay at home? You've got the, the you're getting the benefit of having other people in the house that you care for. You get the benefit of not having to pay all of the bills yourself. And you get the benefit of all of the years of your parents' hard labor that you get to enjoy as well. So all the stuff that they've built up, the TVs that they have purchased, all the game systems that they bought, and you know, all the, the decorations that you they've bought that you get to enjoy, right? You don't have to start from scratch like I did. I've never had in my apartment I had God, what did I own of myself? Like what I owned a DVD player. I didn't buy the TV. My parents bought the TV for me when I was younger. I took with me. Um, and I owned two um, DVDs. They were the, the Chappelle Show. Three DVDs, because I had the Lost Season as well. Three DVDs, a DVD player, and um, everything else I had, had been purchased for me growing up. I like Basically, I owned nothing else of my own that I had purchased. So I was all, basically I was there on the floor, and me and my TV. Um, but... We're, uh, let's, let's go back. I might be kind of far afield here. Why do men need women? Why, why do we need women? Why are we defining ourselves around having a spouse, uh, someone to care for? What, what good does that do us other than societally that's what we're supposed to do? And can a man live his life without a woman? Yes, of course they can. Like, it's, that's not impossible, right? Um, then why do we, why is society so focused on it? Why do we need to have men feel like they're not serving some grand purpose if they don't have a woman in their life? And that's, I, I want to leave you with that question because there's no good answer to it. There's no good reason why society does that other than perpetuation of society. Okay, we need to have babies in our society in order to keep our society going. All right, and so what you're finding around the world is as birth rates are declining and the, uh, the population curves are turning into pyramids where you have way more old people than you have young people, which is not sustainable, and eventually you're going to have a population collapse and the whole society crumbles, you're going to see, and you are seeing, efforts in order to get the population to have more babies, to bring in breeders, Right? Japan is actually um, going to be facing this issue right now. Uh, their, their population is completely upside down. They have, they're basically not having any babies at all over there. And they're considering bringing in people from other countries in order to have children and be citizens there. But they're also running into a super racist culture that does not want that in any way. And so Japan is either going to have to figure it out or they're going to collapse. And here in the United States, we see it ourselves, you know, um, uh, we are seeing kind of a, a trend toward um, having fewer and fewer children and an older and older demographic in our population. And if we don't figure that part out, if our young people just go, I just don't see a purpose in having kids because, you know, the global climate collapse is going to come and I don't want to subject my children to that. Okay, well, then what's the point of getting married in the first place? And what's the point of moving out? And what's like, if, if we can't get young people to understand that having babies is good for society, then they're not going to have babies. And that's going to lead to problems down the road. And so, I mean, let's go back to men. Like, what is a man's purpose? It sounds like, by and large, a man's purpose is to have babies. 
and to go work and pay for those babies. Because otherwise, we don't have a purpose here in society because, you know, we need to have babies in society in order to grow the civilization. And if we're not doing that, then why are we having people at all? And that's what I'm going to end on. Because if we, like, I either we, we either fulfill our purpose in the population as a society growing the population or we're just wasted space. I don't know. It seems rough. I, I, thankfully, I, I'm married and have a daughter, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a reader, right? <laughs> Keep looking for light in the tempest, guys. God will show you the way.